is Henrik Knoche. I'm at Aalborg University at the uh, Department of Architecture, Design and uh, Media Technology. What it means is that my uh, work has been mostly in designing systems uh, for people. And I'm going to present mostly work um, on uh, VR and AR that we in our department have been uh, working on. Um, and this typically includes some sort of uh, consideration of how we should design the systems with uh, a given set of uh, constraints that we have. So I will start with um, this uh, project we had with a museum, um, which is called a Kollinghus, which is, uh, if you go next, you will see this. Um, it's, a, it's a church, an old church or uh, sanctuary in which we, that burnt down. And the, the, the problem that we had to address in this, how, how to make it possible for people to experience uh, this uh, site um, when it's not renovated and to be able to have a, an understanding of what it used to be like, the original beauty. And you will see the, um, the original state in the, in the next, uh, if you go one over, so this is the, the current state, what is left after a big fire and some other things. And they added, of course, the lights on, on top. Um, and if you go next, you'll see the, uh, the original state of, of, of this place. And so we, we thought about uh, how to make this accessible. And this included a um, uh, next, uh, a, a, a portable, Oh, you have to press next again. I think there's a break. Yes. So we had a portable uh, um, sort of uh, AR application on this iPad the kids are holding up here. And that allowed you from certain viewpoints to see the overlay that you can see up there on the right, this, uh, this model that we created in, in, in a long, long process with many, uh, taking many pictures and remodeling this in uh, Unity. And this allowed you to, at, from a certain uh, perspective, to look at this uh, material and uh, the church in its original glory and beauty. Um, if you go next. Um, in, uh, finally, we actually settled on a different solution um, and not this, uh, this portable uh, version, but a, uh, a much, much bigger one that was situated at a, at a specific point. So you would always have the correct orientation actually from this uh, large screen that you can see here that you could move with the handles. And it also had a few other uh, very nice uh, um, properties. Uh, for, for one, it was very easy for new um, uh, people to come in and recognize that other people are currently using this. So the discovery of, of this, uh, artifact and, and this possibility of interacting and experiencing was very, very clear. You could also use this, of course, as a whole, as a whole family. Um, and of, uh, there are other um, nice benefits actually that, you know, you could have this uh, before and after, you can just by changing your viewpoint uh, slightly, you could always see uh, how, it is how it looks now and how it would have looked uh, um, some decades uh, or hundreds of years ago. Yes, so this is one uh, case where we made it uh, possible to experience something that is not there anymore. Um, if you go next, I will try, I will uh, discuss a very uh, different topic. Now we're at, uh, uh, at Utson. Uh, Jörn Utson is the, the claim to fame of Alborg. He's the designer of the Sydney Opera, um, the house that, with the shelves that you might uh, have in your head, a uh, picture of that. And he has a, a museum here uh, or a, a, a sort of a site that also is a, a place for architects to go and, and work. And the goal for, 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 this, uh, for this intervention that we built here is for children to uh, meet art and culture in everyday life and uh, to uh, get exposed a little bit to the skills that architecture, uh, architectural ar architects or designers of architecture um, engage with and so educating them about building and thinking um, in different designs and next to uh, uh, think about also what it, what it means to scale. So this uh, intervention we built was built based on on the idea of Lego, you know, which is a, a, 
a very uh, common thing in, in, in Denmark uh, where, where it's produced. So how to go from these Lego bricks and build buildings to something that is then experienceable in uh, virtual reality. So the idea is that, that you build small buildings and, and, and physically, and then you can experience it at scale later on. This is uh, work of uh, um, a number of students actually, a student project we uh, worked with in collaboration with Utson Center. If you go next, you can see, so that what, what the, the first step is of this process. So we have all these children that come in and then they build uh, these buildings. And then next you can see, um, if you go next, you can see the, the final uh, version of that. And what happens then is you see that in the next slide is that we uh, have a Skinect, uh, scanner software that is running on a machine. Uh, that's number one. Then we have a, uh, on number two, uh, there is a Microsoft Connect that scans this uh, building that is uh, located at number three. And it's actually on a turntable. So you can see it from all different sides, from all different angles. And then it gets uh, scanned as a 3D uh, uh, model. And then if you go next, which then gets imported and the children can then uh, modify these buildings in Minecraft, which is also very popular with, with children. So the, while the, the scans are not perfect, the, the kids are having a lot of fun uh, with these approximate uh, scans and then they uh, chop away and add a few further details in that. If you go next, then you can, uh, after that is done, we, exp we uh, take this and put this in this landscape. So you can then experience the building in its, in its, in its context in this uh, virtual reality world. And in the next slide, you can see how that works. So there's a little uh, booth on the right hand side where you see uh, the, the rightmost child has a, uh, a head mounted display on and the other friends and, and, and children there at the workshop they can see at the screen and they can communicate and we're, tell him where to go and uh, uh, they can see what he is experiencing. And then on the left, there's a, you know, an example a screenshot of, of what you would see. So then you can kind of both e experience the, the context of the building um, that you saw on the previous slide and you can go into and experience this now to full scale. So this is a whole um, uh, kind of pipeline now that uh, illustrates the, you know, coming from the crafty side of, of putting it together, very constructivist, and then later on experiencing this thing to scale. And you could fly about it, of course. You could do anything that you can do in, in, in Minecraft in, in virtual reality. If you go to the next slide, I'll give you another example of a, a solution we uh, developed for a uh, for a museum in Agersborg, is the West Himmelands Museum. And uh, there it was about how is it uh, to, uh, possible to experience this Viking site, uh, cultural heritage site, uh, through what was called indirect AR. So it's, it's similar to uh, the first problem, but in, in this case, actually, we did not develop a, um, something with the uh, proper tracking actually of, of where uh, we are. If you can go to the next slide, I'll show you how, how this was actually done. Due to limitations on, on, uh, on the devices and in terms of drifting when you use the um, IMUs, I, I'm not sure how technical you all are, but there are ways of understanding on how you're rotating um, yourself. Um, and that's problematic because typically you need the gravitation actually uh, to do so for the sensors. So when you're turning around sideways, you know, the, the accuracy of, of that uh, sensing uh, drifts over time. And, and so we had to use basically a, a visual landmark, which is the church that you can see on the right hand side. People could point to that and then they could use this. And this uh, solution uh, allowed them, if you go to the next slide, to see and, and run a treasure hunt. And now in, this, uh, in these images now that you see here, th these are basically, um, if you turn this, this uh, on the left-hand image, for example, you can turn, it's a 360 degree image and superimposed, you see these buildings here and these buildings are actually non-existent. So if you look uh, past the, the uh, if you're at that site where you uh, uh, invoke this image, you would not be able to see these uh, buildings. Um, but the feed, the, the, the sky, for example, is captured on the day that the, the, the 360 degree photo was taken. 
And that's why they call this actually indirect um, augmented reality, because we, we don't have a, a live feed on, over which we superimpose these uh, images of these buildings. On the right hand side, you see, for example, a wall um, that's also not existent anymore. It's buried underneath uh, the grass. So that's um, another case. And my final example that I want to show you is in the next slide. Um, this is not from the cultural heritage uh, sector actually, but it has, it illustrates one interesting uh, uh, possibility of um, virtual reality, specifically on how you can use VR to make experiences possible that are not possible in the real world. In this case, um, if you have people with dementia and they have their spouses uh, taking or other uh, people which are called informal caregivers, so that could be anybody who is close to you and helps you in your daily life, these people get very, very frustrated with the person who has dementia because they're so forgetful. And so this VR experience allows ordinary people that are taking care of somebody with dementia to experience what it's like to have dementia. So you can see that uh, on the left hand uh, image, you see that there's a, a cupboard and where the red circle is, there's supposed to be some mugs actually. But when you look, when you are now putting on the head mounted display, you look at this and you say, I don't see any mugs, right? And then in the right hand side image, that's when we uh, tell people, when we come into the scene, but the mugs are right here. You can see them now in the red circle, there are the mugs. And of course, for the person who's in VR and was just looking at this and they were not there. And now that the, the helper is there and is telling them, look, here they are. Um, they understand this, uh, this frustration that you would experience as a, as a person. So this is one of the nice properties of VR that we also use in, in other contexts that you, it's possible for example, to fly above the building that you built in, in, in Lego bricks, right? So these are one of the big advantages. So if you go to the next slide, I'll quickly uh, point you to our um, course that we have created as part of the digital culture project that we're currently uh, working on. This is uh, if you want to learn more about uh, augmented or virtual reality, um, this, this course provides you a number of ideas and, and ways of creating VR experiences yourself. There's no headset required, so you could just uh, start building something with a, a very simple laptop uh, or, or computer. Um, the course will teach you on, on uh, the understanding the potentials and limitations that uh, VR and AR technology has to offer. And if you go to the next one, you'll, you'll experience that through from real uh, virtual reality uh, case studies but also hands-on practice of creating VR yourself um, with uh, some very easy to use tools. And you'll have short rewarding activities that we hope uh, you'll find enjoyable uh, and teaching you something about VR. And uh, that concludes my time, I think, um, for what I had.